It's difficult to choose an outstanding document from the many varied records that are held at Warwickshire County Record Office, but perhaps the one that intrigues me most is an account book belonging to the Warwick Borough Collection. It dates to the medieval period, a time which I'm generally fascinated by. I like the idea that a capable woman is behind its compilation. I'm interested in the family to which this record relates, the food and drink listed, and the quantities consumed, the names and numbers of the guests, probably logged by the order they came to dine in the Great Hall. But nothing compares to how this record relates to one of the most well-known people in European history, and yet the person who resides near to where the diners sit is never mentioned. The record doesn't tell how the leading member of the household and some of his most important guests are responsible for this person's downfall. It doesn't allude to the person in any way. This is the Richard Beecham household account book covering the years 1431 to 1432, which was created at the instigation of his daughter Margaret she being overseer of the accounts for her father's household whilst in Rouen, when her husband, John Talbot, was imprisoned by the French. Richard was in command of the garrison at Rouen and consequently was jailer to and hosted the trial of Joan of Arc. We know Joan's story, an illiterate peasant girl from Van Couleur in France who believed she'd been visited by saints sent from God, appointing her to bring about the coronation of the Dauphin, Charles, and thereby free France from English occupation. She had not only convinced Charles enough that she had been sent by God to fulfil this mission, but through subsequent military successes, had helped clear a way forward for Charles to be crowned at Rennes, providing the impetus for the fight back against the English. Captured and sold to the English by Burgundian forces, Joan was then imprisoned for eight months whilst awaiting trial by a church court. During this time, she was watched day and night by soldiers, endured constant interrogation and torment, and was humiliated and attacked. She was finally tried by a court influenced by the English and in particular urged forward by Richard and the Duke of Bedford. Richard maintained her as his captive and is known to have shown her the instruments of torture in his dungeon at Rouen Castle. When she became ill as a result of food poisoning, it was he who ensured her care, though only because he needed her to stand trial. So picture Joan chained to her bed not more than 100 yards from the great hall in which her jailer, Richard Beecham, John Lustenborough, probably the Burgundian commander, John of Luxembourg, who sold her to the English, and Chief Judge Pierre Couchon, Bishop of Beauvais, openly currying favour with the English in the hope of being appointed Archbishop of Rouen, amongst others, are recorded in the accounts as dining during the days of Joan's trial. It is impossible not to speculate over the discussions taking place and to imagine these men manoeuvring and manipulating events. Because for Richard, it was of the utmost importance that there be a trial at which Joan would be discredited, found guilty of heresy and witchcraft, allowing for a seemingly just execution. Joan had, after all, flouted all the rules of medieval society. A peasant girl who wore men's clothing, took up arms and involved herself in military campaigns, became literate and ultimately proclaimed God favoured the French cause. Joan was burned at the stake on the 30th of May, 1431, as a witch and heretic, and thereby was written into history. And this is why for all that this document doesn't mention Joan, I believe it to be most remarkable. Thank you.